Hello and welcome to another tutorial on multi-threading in Java from caveofprogramming.com and this tutorial is on semaphores in Java. So I'm going to start by creating a semaphore object here equals new semaphore like this and I'll give it an initial count of one and uh, a semaphore is um, a object that maintains a count like this. This is the count and we refer to the count as the number of available permits of the semaphore and you can get the number of available permits available permits by saying semaphore.available permits pretty simple so this has one permit now there's a method that increments the number of available permits and it's called release so if you call release now um, I've got two permits and of course I could start this with zero and release would make it one and there's also a method that um, decrements the count of available permits, which is called acquire. So if, I've, if I start with one, release one and acquire one, I've got one by the time I finish. Or if I start with one and acquire one, then I've got zero. Pretty simple. And uh, the point of this is that acquire will actually wait if there's no permits available. So let's say I've got no permits here and I call acquire. This will just wait until a permit is released somewhere and I'm not releasing a permit so it will just wait indefinitely and uh, so you can think of this as acquire and release um, for a semaphore with one permit is a bit like a lock it's a bit like doing lock and unlock on a lock and um, indeed um, you can use this as, as a lock so a semaphore with one permit um, is basically a lock and uh, the only difference is that you can happily release from different threads to where you did the acquire. So with a lock you have to unlock from the same thread that you locked from, but there's no such requirement with a semaphore. Now um, what um, semaphores are usually used for is to control um, uh, access to some resource. So let's say you um, you have um, well let's let's start coding that and see how it would look. Um, what I'll do is I will um, create a connection object here. Let's call it connection like this connection, and I'll make this a singleton. So I'll make the constructor private private connection like that, and I'll give it a static, I'll give the class an instance of itself, so private static connection connection instance equals new connection and I'll have a method for retrieving that um, that instance, so public static connection get instance like this return instance um, so this is just um, an absolutely normal singleton pattern and I'll, I'll give this one method as well which I'll call um, public void connect like this and connect doesn't do anything at the moment but now in my main program of course I could call connection dot get instance dot connect and there's only ever one instance object at any given time uh, sorry there's only ever one connection object at a given time so um, the idea is here that you can make connections to this connection. So I'll give it a private count, um, private int count, and this is going to be the number of connections that are made at any given given moment. So actually, maybe it's better to call it connections. And then in connect here, I'll just have a synchronized block, synchronized this, let's say, um, and I'll increment the number of connections like that and then let's output it here as well so current connections like that and I'll say connections and uh, I'll also uh, when it when you exit the um, when you exit the connect method I will just decrement the number of connections currently made and in the middle here let's just simulate simulate doing some work here with thread dot sleep make it sleep for 2000 milliseconds let's say and let's just handle that um, exception here with try catch 
So now if I run this, um, I just connect, it says one connection and then um, and then it um, exits. Now in, um, in my main program here, I'm going to create a massive bunch of threads. So I'll use executor, I'll use an executor service like this, executor. And I'll say that equals executors dot new cache thread pool like this. And a cache thread pool is just a thread pool which um, every time I call submit on this executor, which I'll do like 200 times, so I++, I'll say executor.submit, it will just create a new thread for me um, and it would try to um, reuse threads. So um, if, if it was able to, um, uh, if it was able to um, use, reuse a thread that had become idle to run one of these processes that I'm submitting, it would do. But here I'm just going to submit 200 all at once. So there's not going to be any reuse of um, threads, I don't suppose. So um, I'll say here, public void run, like that. And, um, and what I'll do is I'll just call this connect thing in here. So, so I'm creating 200 threads here and I'm trying to call connect from all 200. And uh, one thing I need to do here is um, I want my program to terminate when these threads finish. So I, need to, so I need to call shut down on the executor to shut down the managerial kind of thread after all these threads have finished running. And I'll also call, I'll also wait until they finish by saying ex, uh, executor.await termination and let's make it wait for a day, which is long enough. Okay, so this is just running 200 threads. And if I run this, you see I've immediately got 200 connections. So um, let's see how I can um, limit the number of connections at any given time. And uh, the way I can do that is I have a semaphore in here. So private um, semaphore sem equals new semaphore. And let's, let's say I want 10 connections at a time. So to make a connection, you've got to acquire one of these permits. And after the connection's finished, it will release a permit. Now, um, what I could do, and what I can do, and what I will do, in fact, is I can say here, semaphore.acquire. Um, so this acquires a permit before it can run. And let's just put that um, in a try catch, because it throws an interrupted exception. And uh, when I finish um, kind of running this connect method, I'll release the permit again. And so now if I run this, you can only get 10 connections at a given time. And when um, when uh, 10 of these, when one of these finishes, it will release the permit and then another thread can acquire that connection. So this is doing it in batches of roughly 10 because they're all finishing at um, about the same time. Now one, one thing here that is, is not quite right with this code is that if this um, here, if this code here were to throw an exception, then um, release might never get called. So it's safer if I, let's have a new public void connect here, like this. And let's rename this to do connect, um, do connect. And um, here I'll say, I'll have my semaphore.acquire code um, in, um, in connect here. And I'll, then I'll say try, and in here I'll do my do connect like that. And in a finally block here, finally, I can do, um, I can have my release code here. So I'll take this out of here and put this in the finally block. And now, even if my, um, even if my code in here throws an exception, um, the finally block will still run and I'll, it will still do release. So um, one last thing I want to mention about semaphores here is just that, um, this, this semaphore object constructor has a furnace parameter and if you have a, a fur semaphore by setting this to true then uh, it means that um, these, whichever thread called acquire first will be the first one to get a permit when a permit becomes available and if you don't have true there then that is not guaranteed so usually you probably want a, um, a fur semaphore here, so you probably want that to be
absolutely true. Although I, I, I think there are performance benefits to having it equal to false, but um, most of the time you will want it to be true because you don't want it to be kind of leaving some thread in the background while it services other threads and you don't want like one thread to have to wait ages and ages to get a permit when other threads are getting those permits that have been waiting for a shorter time. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial and join me again next time and you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com. So until next time, happy coding.